Hi there, it's Greg Daly from RPM Technic. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director here and we've got the gents from Manti Racing here. So we've got a GT3 RS MR and a GT2 RS MR. What we're going to be doing is looking at some of the behind the scenes action. What goes into the cars, some of the technical highlights, be it aero, suspension, some of the lightweight materials that go into these cars and make them the ultimate track weapon. So, less talking, let's get on with it. Behind me we've got the GT3 RS MR coming together. The original suspension has been removed. So let's have a chat with the guys, find out what makes them technically so capable and also about how they set them up. So I've just grabbed Michael for two seconds and we're just gonna um, talk through the arrangement of the suspension in here. Yeah. Uh, we are using complete new shocks on the front as well as on the rear. Mm -hmm. On the front, we're using a three-way adjustable shock with an upside down uh, tube mm -hmm. and an external reservoir. Uh, we are adapting the original lifting system to our shock. It's fully aluminum. Uh, we have a linear race spring, and this is what gives us the most performance, especially on the front. And in terms of actual adjustment, how, how would the guys go about adjusting it? We have a separated reservoir in the front compartment where you adjust uh, the low speed and high speed compression. Mm -hmm. And we have an adjuster knob on the bottom of the strut housing where you adjust the rebound of the shock. It was firstly introduced in Porsche race cars on the new GT3 R. Mm -hmm. More or less keeps the car to the ground and therefore because we had lots of inquiries, people asking like, can I buy the aero package? Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't do that because the original suspension on the car can't deal with the increased downforce the aero package provides and yeah. therefore we always change the suspension. Lovely, thanks Michael. Hi Tim, always good to see you and it's always really interesting to get Tim's point of view from a driver's aspect. So the cars are set up very well by Porsche with the systems on and off. Most drivers faster with the systems on I would imagine. Most amateur, and I mean this respectfully, yeah. most amateur drivers will always be faster with <laughs> everything switched on. Yeah. Um, and it's a safety net as well. Mm. Um, a professional driver will almost always be quicker with it switched off, yeah. um, and he can control it on the limit and get the most out of the car without being held back at all. I'm here with Michael Grassel from Manti Racing, and we're looking at the geometry equipment we've just purchased from Manti. Talk us through the equipment, Michael. Yeah, of course. Starting with the measurement wheels at the bottom. Those are the parts which we are using instead of the standard wheels on the car. Mm -hmm. We simply want to make sure that the wheels don't have an impact on the measurement. We also want to create space for the technician in order to be able to adjust uh, properly. Mm -hmm. And this is what they are used for. Yeah. So second uh, one, we have our measurement tables. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see we have four tables where the car will stand on uh, with its measurement wheels. Yeah. There is a weight scale included underneath. Mm -hmm. And we also have a tablet where you can see uh, the weight of the car in every corner. Yep. Here, those small razors we installed because we will create a level, and this level might be tricky when you have a really rough surface, yep. and therefore it's possible with the razors to balance that out and level the level. Have a consistent environment. The most important benefit is that in case you use our tools, uh, once you have an issue with the car, you can send us your data, yeah. our engineers can take a look at, and they immediately know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They don't have to recalculate, translate, whatever. They just use your values and they can directly see what's happening. So Tim, we better be quick, we just interrupted the guys as they're about to do the geometry setup. But from a driver's point of view, why is it so exciting that we can actually bring this with us to a circuit? 
Well, you've got to remember the geometry is affecting two major elements of your driving experience. Yep. The balance of the car mm -hmm. and also how it's wearing and working the tyres, yep. both across the tread and in terms of wear and heat on the tyre. Yeah. So the fact that we can bring this to the circuit and make adjustments that we know within 100% are accurate, mm. then we can do that at the circuit and see what the results are in real time without having to come back to the workshop, reset it, go back. We can do it actually at the circuit very quickly. So that's fascinating to understand how these guys get to the setup that the cars are finished at. Well, you can't see it and you can't touch it, but it's always your friend, <laughs> especially once you get over 100 miles an hour. So I'm here with Tim Harvey and we talk about aerodynamics. The aero works both over the car and yep. underneath the car, reducing the lift of the car. Mm -hmm. So diffusers and air directors at the front can make a huge difference to how much overall downforce you have. If you put the big spoiler on and did nothing else, the car would understeer, it wouldn't turn around the corner effectively in the high speed. So is there any circuits in the UK where someone's actually really going to feel these aero bits working? Yeah, very much so. And Silverstone Grand Prix circuit is a great example of that, especially the sort of maggots, Beckett's, um, chapel, hang a, hang a straight sequence of corners, mm. which is right, left, right, left, yeah. all the way through, all taken at over that magic 100 miles an hour um, speed it's so it's really affecting you both in braking acceleration transition change of direction it's everywhere you need downforce and if you're racing a Carrera Cup car through there you want your wing on maximum angle so these rear carbon what we call aero discs are certainly worth mentioning uh, as you can see, they're made from very high-grade carbon fibre, and what their actual job is to smooth the um, sort of airflow as it comes down past the side of the car and out of the wheel arch at high speed. By smoothing this turbulent air, what it's allowing is that the rear wing can manage the air coming past the car more efficiently. And what that actually means is that you can run two degrees less wing, which equals less drag on the car, and therefore higher top speed without sacrificing downforce. Plus they look really cool. So now we're really involved in the depth of the build of this car. We've just come across um, the rear end and the hinges. What, what are we looking at here? What's interesting? So this is the kit they developed. So the wing now mounts and fixes to the chassis. But now the uprights are going to be bolted, so, so the there is car. going to be no flex. It's just going to push that down for straight through the car. And they happen to be beautifully made. There is <laughs> They're that, pretty so, cool yeah. too. But there's all sorts of interesting bits when you start unbolting these cars, like carbon hinges, carbon bits on normal cars, which are plastic down here. It's yeah. pretty special really, isn't it? It's a really special car, yeah. We're at a stage now where the two cars are almost complete. And to be honest, everyone's wandering around thinking the same thing. Which one would I have? For me, it's got to be the GT2 RS MR. It holds a Nürburgring lap record. The wing just looks awesome. That particular car, the color scheme, I think just really works. Uh, and ultimately, it's got some serious grunt. No sitting on the fence. Which one would you have? For me, the 2RS is more challenging because you can't do everything flat. It stands to bite you if you get it wrong. Yeah, of course, but I mean, honestly, the conversion will make it more calm. Okay. Because Porsche had to build a car which performs everywhere. Yes. And a car which has to do 640 on the ring but also is capable of doing 345 on the highway, <laughs> needs a setup which helps both yeah. extreme situations. And this is what Porsche did quite good. And we are just pointing it more towards the track. So I'm here with Ricky, who's been responsible for building the GT3 RS MR. We were looking at some of the parts when they were on the floor earlier, and is there anything new that you've, you've not touched or seen before? Well, it's the whole design of the rear wing. Um, it's, it's very well uh, structured now, so there'll be no movement, um, which, yeah, it'd be perfect. And we were watching you putting in these plates, which need to be riveted in. I wouldn't fancy doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the measurements are there. Uh, Mentai give you every bit of instruction as, as, it, as it should be. 
So I'm here with Dan, who's responsible for building the GT2 RS MR. And uh, so how have you found the Manti products going onto the car compared to other aftermarket offerings? There's been a lot more R&D involved in the carbon parts, which means it will fit a lot easier yes. going forward. It's like when you have the front bumper off to fit the front diffuser, yeah. it all just slides on together instead of you fettling around to try and get it all to fit. And what would you prefer, a 3RS or a 2RS? 2RS. Everyone said the same thing yeah, so far. RS. I think it's the colour as well that does it for me. I do like a yellow car. So we've been looking at these cars for two days now, Ollie. 3RS or 2RS MR, what's your preference? It's a three for me. That should be aspirated all day long. It's a cup car for the road. You've got a lot less weight hanging over the back, no turbochargers, intercoolers. So it's physics, isn't it? And I guess the other difference is the relationship between the, the throttle input from the driver and what the engine's doing is more direct. Yeah, I've, you don't really get lag on these modern turbos now. So I don't think you could really argue that, but noise is definitely a consideration here. Yeah, the, the naturally aspirated cars sound amazing. And um, this particular one in green, we know you love a green car. <laughs> love a green car. <laughs> there you have it. If we compare the 2RS to a 3RS, what does the driver feel? Well, the biggest difference is pure engine power. The GT2 RS has way over 600 horsepower, yeah. the GT3 RS 520, mm -hmm. and the turbo engine dominates the driving experience. There is obviously a little bit of a weight difference. Do you notice that as a driver? Yeah, the GT3 is a little bit more stable. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit stiffer, so it has less weight to control. Yeah. Um, so in the corners, you notice in the GT2 RS, there's a bit more roll movement, but you need that to give you the feedback to control it on the limit. I hope you've enjoyed our mini series on the Manti MR builds of the 2RS and the 3RS. It's been great to have the guys here, learn about the background of the company, the research and development that goes into the products, and ultimately to understand how they get put together. It's also been good from my point of view, not having to hold the camera myself. So hopefully you found it interesting. Any feedback we'd also like to hear, so let us know in the comments or whatever people say on these things. And uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>